COP, or Conference of Parties, is an annual event that brings together decision makers from countries around the world to make commitments on tackling climate change. COP has led to major global agreements in the past, like the Paris Agreement in 2015, where countries agreed to make efforts to limit global warming to below 1.5 degrees Celsius. This year, COP26 takes place in Glasgow, and countries will be bringing their commitments to reduce emissions by 2030 in order to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. We're sitting down with Eamon Ryan, Minister for Transport, Climate, Environment and Communications, to ask questions from young people on the commitments Ireland is bringing to COP26 and how the government plans to achieve them. Firstly, could you introduce yourself? Eamon Ryan is my name. I'm the Minister of Environment, Climate, Communications and Transport in the Irish Government. How are you feeling heading into the COP26 negotiations? Well, I'm looking forward to going, first of all, because I have an interest in climate change and have had for about 30 years. So for me, it's a chance to meet some of the best scientists and listen to the latest evidence. And it's an important moment. We need to really need to affect change now. The agreement that was made in Paris six years ago now almost um, was one of those encouraging moments and um, where I give you a sense of hope that we can come together as a world to solve this and other environmental problems. And I suppose I'm going to Glasgow hoping that it'll be a similar moment. It, it won't be as dramatic as the French, as the Paris Club meeting when there was a kind of a, a treaty written, but it's putting in the rules and the justice and the ambition to back that up is what's going to happen in Glasgow. I'm nervous because if it doesn't work, that doesn't, that's going to cause real difficulties. But I'm, I'm hopeful and I think if everyone goes the right attitude, we should come out with a good outcome. What promises and actions is Ireland bringing to COP26? Well, first is bringing our climate plan so that we show what we're going to do to lower our emissions. We're part of a European Union that's significant in scale and that um, works with a lot of the other bigger countries, US, China, India, to try and get agreement so that it's a global approach. The more that everyone's doing this, the easier it is for everyone. It's not competition, it actually helps because we know, well, this is the way the world's going. This is where the innovation's gonna take place. So I think for Ireland, it's in our own climate plan, but it's also working with the EU and using the strength we have with the size of the EU in, in the negotiations to try and get a deal. That's our main contribution. Does the government have any priorities when it comes to issues of climate justice at COP26? Or, for example, how will Ireland show their support to communities who are most affected by climate change? We have to do this. We kind of think, oh, well, Ireland, we're only small, but we're actually equivalent in our emissions to 400 million of the poorest people on the planet whose emissions are really low. And they'll be the ones the worst affected, first affected by climate change. It's a key issue that the wealthier countries, and we're one of them, provide the climate finance to help those poorer countries. And we will do that, providing the resources and capability for those countries to take part and to represent them. We do that on the United Nations Security Council. We were elected to it by the small island states and by the developing countries. So it's in those ways I think we can help provide climate justice, which we need to do here at home, but also abroad. In the past, Ireland has failed to meet its emissions reduction targets. Are we on track to achieve our goal to reduce emissions by 51% by 2030? We're only starting, and you're right, we haven't delivered the sort of emissions reductions in the past that we committed to. So it's not starting from a good place. What we have to do this decade is beyond compare challenging to have emissions in a decade, but that's what the science tells us we need to do. I think we can do it. It helps that we have, first of all, a budget for it. We agreed a national development plan last month, which gives us the money to make the change we need to make in areas like transport and energy. And with our climate action plan, we also have a plan to do it. And it will be better for the country. It's not hardship posting. It's not something that's all about punishing or putting a cost on people. It's just about system change and doing things in a different way. And we have a plan for that. What will be our biggest challenge when it comes to achieving our 2030 goal to reduce emissions? And how does the government plan to overcome this? 
I think the biggest challenge is probably public buy-in because it's difficult. You know, we're changing systems in place for 40, 50 years. Um, so it's not without difficulty. Like, for example, safe routes to schools and modal shift that way and make it safe for people to walk and cycle and take the bus to school. Well, you got to make that space safe. And that can be controversial sometimes. It might require traffic to slow down or go a different route or having to pay, which you will have to pay in the taxpayer for the public transport system so people can take the bus. And that's not easy. So that public acceptance of the need and the benefit and the desire for change, be it down to putting in a cycle lane outside of school or providing the funding so we can run the bus service properly, that's the biggest challenge is public will, political will, and, and I think that's why the climate strikes have been really important, because I think they've set the environment when we can get that public will, that public buy-in. So I think that's the biggest issue, that's the most critical issue. It is clear from recent IPCC reports that fossil fuels need to be wiped out. What steps will Ireland take to move quickly to sustainable clean energy in the next five years? 2050, as you may be aware, is simply just too late. Yeah, we need to go at absolute speed now because we don't have any time. Uh, we've been looking at this for 30 years. Had we started 30 years ago with the level of actions we're thinking about now, we had a much easier path. So you're right, we cannot delay. We have, I mean, Ireland hasn't shown great leadership, but in recent years, across all parties, I think that's starting to change. It changed when we said no more fracking for gas in Ireland. We said no, we put a ban on it. It's changing when we said we will no more, we will issue no more licenses for oil and gas exploration. We're probably one of the windiest places on the planet. So rather than importing fossil fuels, we can develop our own power supplies here. We can convert them using a thing called electrolysis into other gases, hydrogen gases, which we can use instead of the fossil gases. And I think that's where we've got the greatest potential. We're building out now to start that network of new offshore renewables while we say no to the fossil fuels at the same time. How can Ireland inspire better climate leadership in Europe? I think in all the occasions when you're talking about climate, we have to start listening. Like, I mean, if we stood up and said, oh, we know everything, or we're the best, we're the holiest in that, well, yeah, not really. I think our job is to collaborate. Collaboration, swapping and sharing that power. So we'll be building a new grid cable from France to Ireland, and another new one from the UK to Ireland. So at the times when it's really windy here, we'll be able to share power. And at times when it's calm here, we, we'll be able to bring it in. So that's a collaboration where you're listening, working with people and sharing power, I think is the way to go.